E. Chip and Robert here, and we wanted to talk to you today a little bit about what's going on with our projects. One of the things that I don't think we have conveyed is that we want to do the, we want to build contentment debt free. And so the projects that we have are ongoing projects, and both E. Chip and I still work. The time we have to devote to the projects is in the evening and on the weekends. The project we're working on now is the, a trailer for the solar generator. We want to build the mobile solar generator and we're enclosing a trailer as our current project. Each hip, what about this trailer? What about it? Well, tell us about it. You, you know, it's... It's a trailer. <laughs> Here's the thing. Because there's no energy, no power, no electricity, nothing out of contentment at this point, it is a 100% undeveloped raw piece of land. We need electricity out there in order to power the equipment, uh, you know, to build the, to build the place. And so, you know, when we began considering all of the things that we're gonna that we're gonna have to have in place, all of the infrastructure that we would have to have in place just to begin construction on such a remote piece of property, one of the things obviously we considered was a solar generator. Well, as you've seen in prior video, and we'll put the link there, um, I have, or I had, an older solar generator that I built a couple of years ago that we knew was going to be inadequate to get the job done out there. It would not provide the power needs that we had, uh, that we'll have. And so, you know, it was time to scrap that old one and begin to build a new one. Well, I considered lots of different ways to design this. I tore up a whole yellow pad of paper just trying to sketch out ideas for a mobile solar generator um, that was agile enough to get around on that property <clears throat> and then also a one that would supply enough power well I quickly found out that you know going with lower voltage 12 24 volt systems wasn't gonna work uh, because it just wouldn't get us the power and efficiency we needed with the batteries that we had. And as Robert said, you know, we want to do this debt free. So we're trying to find creative ways to be able to do this where we're not, a, where we don't have to have a huge outlay of money and we could still get the job done. So finally, after playing with a bunch of different designs, <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say one of the ways we, one of the creative ways we came up with is this trailer build. It adds to the work, but in the long run, it will be a less expensive trailer. When we were looking for trailers. We discovered most of them are very pricey, well out of our budget, and each ship happened along this rusty old welding trailer for next to nothing mm -hmm. and we took a chance on it and that's where we're going and it's going to be perfect for the need it won't be able to hold anything but the solar equipment except for maybe a little bit of luggage or small items or something like that because it is so compact but uh you know it, the platform is ideal and so now uh, during this solar generator build, you're going to see how we transform this small three foot by five foot platform into a four foot by six foot enclosure that is eight feet high and will support six solar panels, 19,200 watts of power, 19.2 kilowatts, and we'll be able to meet all of the needs, uh, power needs, electrical needs that we'll have out there not only while we're building the house, but at such time as the house is built. The equipment inside of that mobile solar generator will actually be installed into the house, so it's serving a dual purpose. And uh, that's sort of the way that we like to think frugally, 
think ahead, is this something we can use you know, later on for another purpose, or is this just gonna be a one-shot deal that we're gonna have to scrap? The other cool thing about that is that, you know, obviously, once the house is built, we'll have a trailer because it'll be emptied of all of the solar equipment and then we'll just have a utility trailer we can use to haul stuff around. I am a hot mess, but now I get to get underneath that trailer and mess with some differential fluid stuff. It's going to be my first time to change it. I'm super excited. Okay, folks, I thought I'd show you what's going on on the underside of this. This trailer, as I said, is an old welder's trailer. took an axle from an uh, old truck and uh, welded it to the underside of this trailer which is fine. It is what it is. We're going to use it as it is. I was uh, wondering if maybe I could get the uh, pinion gear and ring gear out of here so that I could, uh, you know, reduce a little weight on the trailer. Um, I don't know if I can, but if I pull that ring gear out, it's going to leave the two, you know, axles coming in from the sides without any kind of uh, keeper or anything to hold them in place. I'm afraid they may slide out and I just don't want to take that chance. I I can't see enough in here uh, to tell whether that's something I can do, but <laughs> I'm sure I'm glad I pulled the cover on this because I discovered that uh, somebody at some point filled this differential with motor oil instead of gear oil that's made for a differential and that's bad, bad, bad. You don't do that. Um, that stuff is too viscous creates uh, too much drag um, on the gears and things like that. I mean, oil is oil, I know, but uh, not in this case. I mean, you want this stuff to move freely without any trouble, and it was already really gunking up and smelling bad. It was dark. It was ugly, uh, the motor oil was. So, and, uh, I just never put motor oil on the differential, and uh, if you do, you'll be sorry. Anyway, we'll, uh, we got some good, nice, clean light gear oil to put in here we'll reduce some drag and friction anyway and uh, we'll get this thing put back together view right here Be the welder. I did it. I was doing it like this. It was falling down and I was like that. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> you having fun? I am. This is, this is fun. It's learning the weld's a blast, isn't it? I don't have very good welds, but... Well, that's okay. Neither of us do. All part of learning. And they're going to hold anyway. Alright, let's see what the inverter's doing. <laughs> it's so fast. It was at 90. It took 99% of this thing's available load and the alarm went off a couple of times while you were welding. Good to know this inverter can do it. This inverter can run a welder.
do rag there. Show, show us your do rag. Show it the side. My side hair. Oh yeah, look at that, babe. Mm. Do, I look, do I look like a worker? You do. Now you look a little do more. Do you like, like my tool? Yeah, you look a little bit more <laughs> like Rogue. I thought I was a tool. You are my tool. <laughs> oh please. Do I look really like Rosie the Riveter? Yeah, except for the earring. My pirate earring. Yeah, pirate. Anyway, have fun. different background than you're used to seeing we're actually outdoors <laughs> and uh, for a change and uh, boy is it is it hot and humid it's disgustingly so um, but uh, I want to show you what we've been working on now you know that we've been playing with batteries been playing with an inverter and a lot of uh, equipment and you're probably wondering how are we possibly going to carry this thing and what kind of what kind of mobile uh, base is this going to all go into well here it is and uh, we'd like to introduce it to you we just got through doing the welding and drilling and other work on it that we needed to do to get it ready uh, to begin building up but um, this trailer here we got really for a song $150 used it's an old welders trailer it's fairly narrow and it was only really big enough to carry his large welder uh, you know welding unit and then probably some kind of toolbox on the front when we got the trailer obviously those things were removed but uh, we did a little cutting on it to remove some old pieces and we did a little welding on it to add some new pieces to it and uh, we're gonna widen this trailer by about six inches uh, so that we can uh, put a, uh, a fully enclosed cargo box on this and then um, also what we've done is because the inverter is so heavy and because we realize that you know trying to mount that inverter directly to the plywood trailer wall probably wasn't a uh, wise idea in a piece of moving equipment and we wanted we wanted more support for it so as you can see we've uh, drilled some holes in some angle iron and we've literally welded that to the trailer body um, in order to make sure that that inverter is safe doesn't fly around. Robert and I have been having a blast the past couple of days working on this trailer. We have learned to stick weld which neither of us uh, knew how to do so if you ever see this up close please don't look at our welds closely <laughs> um, and uh, we uh, you know we're learning a lot of things. Um, we've ground on this, sanded on it, painted it, welded it, um, done just done a lot of things. We turned this old rusty trailer into a black shiny new trailer. <laughs> We've got steps. You can see the clouds in it. So next step in the process is to actually build the cargo box on this. So let's do it. Yeah. 